Welcome. What I want to do today is show you how to find uh, the missing, missing measurement of our indicated angle. So what we have here is we have a triangle with I have a missing angle measurement for an angle here, which is x. And the important thing to understand about this triangle is I have this little square at this angle. And what that represents is I have a right angle. And when I have a right angle, I have a right triangle. And when we have a right triangle, it's very important for us to understand that because there's a lot of things we can do when we have a right triangle. One is we can apply the Pythagorean theorem when we're dealing with side lengths. But here, we need to find a missing angle. So when we're using our missing angles, it's really helpful for us to use three trigonometric functions. And I want to kind of go through this and explain your trigonometric functions um, to help you understand them. So when we have a trigonometric function, the first one I want to talk about is our tangent. Okay. So tangent of an angle x is equal to the ratio of the opposite side over the adjacent side. All right, now that's one ratio, or one trigonometric ratio. The next one is your sine function. And we usually we just abbreviate your sine as sin. So sine of x is equal to the ratio of the opposite side length over your hypotenuse and the cosine of x is equal to your adjacent over your hypotenuse. Now I just started abbreviating these just so you guys get used to this, but it's your adjacent over your hypotenuse. Now you might ask me, well where, I kind of remember hypotenuse um, from doing the Pythagorean theorem, but where did you know, your adjacent and your opposite come from? Well, if I'm going to look at my angle x right here, uh, we know that the hypotenuse is always going to be the longest length, right? Well, another way to remember that is your hypotenuse is always directly across from your 90 degree angle. So it doesn't matter what I do to my triangle. I can flip it, reflect it, do anything I want to it, wrinkle up, strangle it, throw it back up there. My hypotenuse is always going to be my longest leg or longest length of my triangle, and it's also going to be directly across from my 90 degree angle. Now, the opposite, excuse me, the opposite and adjacent angles come in where the opposite is directly across from your angle and your adjacent connects your angle to your 90 degree angle. So what we can see is I have my hypotenuse is 8 and then what I have is my opposite side because it's directly across from my angle x. So I need to look at which tan function talks, deals with my opposite and my hypotenuse. And what I look at is I can say the sine function deals with opposite over hypotenuse. So therefore, I'm just going to kind of forget about the tangent and the cotangent. So now I have sine of x equals the ratio of the opposite side over the hypotenuse side. So now what I need to do is say, well, I know the opposite side is equal to 5, and the hypotenuse, I'm sorry, the opposite side is equal to 5, and the hypotenuse is equal to 8. So I have sine of x is equal to 5 divided by 8. Well, let's go and see if we can get a decimal approximation for that just to kind of show us what we're going to do. So I take 5 divided by 8 and I get 0.625. Okay, so what that says now is we have the sine of our, um, sine of our angle x equals 0.625. But we don't want, we want to find out what is the value of x. So what I need to do is I need to undo my sine function. Okay? And what we call this is to do your undo your sine function, we need to look at what we call the inverse of the function. So what we're going to do is we're going to plug in. We want to, to undo sine, we need to use sine inverse. All right? So if we're going to undo sine, we want to undo the sine inverse to our value of our, of our function, which is point, point 0.625. So I'm going to say inverse sine of 0.625. And what that's going to give me is that's now is going to give me the value of my x, which is my missing angle. So what I'll do is I'll take a graphing or a scientific calculator, make sure it's in degree mode. And what I'll do is I'll take inverse sine of 0.625. And what I get is 38.6. And I believe I want to round it to the, to the nearest degree. So 38.6 is going to round to 39 degrees. So therefore, when I plug this in, I can just simply say x equals 39 degrees. So that is how you find the missing length uh, or the missing angle 
missing measurement of your angle when given a right triangle and two side lengths. Thanks.